There are two ways or probably more ways to create this polygon surface on top of this uh, on top of this letter. Letter that, that letter is basically just a sketch with one letter of text and that I just extruded. And the rectangle was just to have a better sense of the scale of this. And so the next thing that you could do is theoretically you can create a sketch on top of this T or maybe better even somewhere in between. So let me undo that. Because we would what I'm what we would be creating is surfaces that you can split this body with the body of the T here. So I would maybe construct an offset plane from the origin plane, maybe about here. And then I would start a sketch on that plane and project intersect that entire body, but then hide the body because I wouldn't need it right now. And then I just basically would start, you know, sketching triangles. Pretty tedious work and pretty pretty manual work as well. And that was not supposed to be there. So so some more triangles and actually that wouldn't work, but that's okay. It's just for demonstration purposes anyway. Um, but you can see this is pretty tedious. And right now you have only created triangles, right? Sketches. And those are flat on that sketch plane. So the next thing you'd have to do is you'd actually have to use the move tool and move these upward. And that doesn't work there. I'm not exactly sure why. So let me try this again. Now it works. So I'm by, by accident, I created another arc there. Ah. Okay, let me delete that arc. And okay, so now I have a few triangles here. Um, that's actually another quad surface there that I don't want. So now I have a few triangles. So now you have a sketch that uh, could roughly resemble a polygonal surface. And then you would have to go into the surface workspace and create patches. Oops, that sketch is auto hidden for all these triangles. And you can see that is rather tedious, even if you do this quite speedy. And then of course, you'd have to sew or stitch all these patches together. Then you have a surface. And then once that surface would have covered that entire um, T here, I would use that surface to split the body of the T to get to my polygonal surface for the T. And of course, that's pretty tedious. So I would like to use Blender to do so. Um, because there's a specific tool in Blender that I can use this for. So I delete the default cube, hit the Q key, and go to perspective, uh, to orthogonal mode, hit the Q key again, and go to the top view. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my units into millimeters. And then I hit Shift A and add a mesh plane. And at the end key, I can see this is two meters large. So we make that 20 millimeters large to uh, match with our scene. And I hit Control A and apply rotation and scale. So now the scale is back to one, and my size here is really 20 millimeters, uh, 20 centimeters. And I don't need that pane anymore. I'm going to apply a modifier and I'm using the subdivision surface. So right now 
and I'm going to hit Z and change to wireframe. Right now it uses cat mode plug, but I want simple subdivision. And maybe that many? That should be okay. I'm going to apply that. So now if I go into, I hit the tab key and go into edit mode, I could theoretically take just as previously done in uh, Fusion 360, I could move these vertices up and down manually. And it would be kind of tedious to do this manually, and particularly if you do this randomly. So I'm going to hit the space key and say render for randomize, and I use the transform randomize. And there I can go into this field and change this with the slider, and it moves these vertices randomly. And uh, they're still quad surfaces, meaning I have only polygons with four vertices. But we'll, um, we'll change that in the next step. So this is for right now, this is OK. This is what I want. And I'm going to, um, where's my modifier? Oh, I applied that modifier. OK, so I'm going to add, uh, hit tab and go out of edit mode. Let me show you that again. Edit mode, hit tab, and then go to object mode. If you do this quick enough, you won't even see that. So I add another mo modifier. That modifier is the triangulate modifier. And now I have a triangular surface. Hit Z, we go back to solid shading, and this is a triangular surface. So now we can export this. File, file, export and we export that into a obj file and downloads and um, call this triangles obj and i want the selection only i want to apply the modifier i do not want the materials because fusion 360 can't do anything with those anyway and i export and now i'm going to go back to fusion 360 i'm going to delete all this stuff here because i don't need this I'm going to insert a mesh. I'm going to pick my, where is it, my triangles.obj. There it is. I'm going to rotate this around and lift it up a little. OK. So this is still a mesh body. And I want to transform that directly into a B-Wrap. I'm going to go into the solid workspace and say create um, base feature. Now I can go in the viewport, select that mesh and say mesh to be red. Hit OK. Finish the base feature. And now that is, well it's actually not a solid body, it's an open surface. Um, or stitched together open surfaces. But what I can do now, I can go ahead and use split body. So I'm going to split this body with the mesh body and say OK. And if we hide this mesh body and the upper part, here is my polygonal T. So it might take a little bit of experimentation uh, so that you don't have these small sliver faces. Uh, they might be undesirable, or they might be not, I don't know. But this is one way how you can create these polygonal random sort of surfaces without sketching. So hopefully this helps.